What is up everybody, Sven Diesel here. We're gonna be tying up the Sexy Sven, as I call it. Uh, it's a streamer pattern. It's basically combining a bunch of different patterns I've seen over the years. This may be exactly like somebody's, but uh, this one's gonna be a single hook, and we're gonna be using some six hot uh, Semperfly wax thread. We're gonna be using two shanks in the rear. This is a 20 millimeter, and we're gonna step up to a 25 millimeter. I'm using a Norvice automatic bobbin, and I uh, got that Semperfly wax thread loaded on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start this right here um, a little bit behind the eye on this shank and work my way towards the, the rear. And then I'm gonna close up that shank and you can snip this off if you want or I know there's a, a tail end shanks now these days where they put a little notch in it. Um, I just kinda leave that there, not a big deal. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna use a super, little bit of super glue. This is Wapsie's uh, Z Cement. And I'll just put that on the threads just to kind of make this a little bit durable, closing that shank and uh, making it just, it's a habit I always do. And so I just continue to do that. It allows you to work your way up that shank eye a little bit further than you traditionally would. Otherwise, your, your thread without waxing it would slip down. And so we'll end right there where the tag end is. And we're going to be using quite a bit of this uh, marabou. This is the Fish Hunter marabou in fluorescent white and iron dun. These come in a ton of different colors, so you can pretty much mimic any bait fish you want. Um, and then with Sharpies, you know, you pretty much your options are, options are endless. So I really like this fluorescent white. I usually use that for the belly um, along with like creams. But look at this. This is just a really, really awesome, webby, um, natural, a lot of fibers flowing off. I'm just going to trim out the tip. And the reason I do that is, um, one, to get rid of those uh, shorter fibers at the tip and also to get that stem out of there so that the uh, tail flows freely. And you may think that if you're used to tying like woolly buggers that this tail is going to be a little bit long, but this streamer is going to be about, I don't know, five, six inches in length. Um, I haven't actually measured it, but um, I follow the same process. So we're, we're maybe about three times the length of that shank overall, roughly, if you're looking for a measurement. And I'm going to run the marabou all the way along that shank um, to create a little bit of a, a better profile, a little bit bulk of the body. And um, I don't think it increases the weight significant enough that you need to trim it out. But if you're not used to throwing heavy streamers, maybe you want to trim that out and just have the bare shank. Now, um, at this point where I'm not concerned about um, uh, white or, or, or which which side's top or bottom, that tag end of the shank doesn't make a big difference. Um, you could technically tie the white on the bottom side, but I haven't found it to cause any issues with swimming. Um, and so I just, whatever works for you, whatever order you're going in, just go ahead and tie in this, this uh, iron dun. But you want to make sure that you keep it on the top half of that shank. You can see I'm forming a line right there on the shank. And that's how you want to do. You want to separate these colors, and we're keeping it primarily on the top. I'm not trying to, you know, push it around the shank. Rather, I want to keep it more top to bottom profile rather than all the way around in a circular motion. Kind of more of an oval if we were looking from the shank eye down to the rear. And we're going to create a dubbing loop about three to four inches um, right here and tie it right there back to the rear. And that's going to be for our, our, our flash material. I'll put it in my little roto zip tool I have here by Stonfo and go ahead and just set it off to the side. And then we're going to also be tying in for structure um, a, a bugger feather. This is by Whiting Farms. This is white. It almost looks like a ghost barred white. I mean, it's, it's a pretty unique color. You could do grizzly. Like I said, these these materials come in a ton of different colors, so you can you know pretty much match whatever you want. Um, and we're going to tie this in by the tip. And I, I think that I got this method from a, a Clark Pierce. He does a complex twist bugger using a schloppen. I'm using this bugger pack because it's a little bit stiffer of a fiber, and I'm just using one um, because I wanted to just uh, create uh, these. These pretty much are the perfect length for the profile I'm trying to mimic. Um, and also that rooster just has a little bit more structure, a little bit stiffer fiber. And for the uh, flash material, we're using this uh, Solar Flare by uh, Snake Riverfly. This is an extremely flowy hair um, flash material. I've also used uh, a Ripple Ice, or they have a product called Crinkles On that is a little bit more stiff and structured. But I'm just going to pull out a strip, kind of line them up, twisting them like a pencil. And I know they're not even at this point, but I'm just going to cut them in half because these are a little bit long whereas when I use like a like a dubbing like a semi seal I've also used for this um, that you don't really need to trim but then I'll go ahead and start stacking these feathers so that I don't have all those butt ends just on one side and I do that just by 
rolling them together and then pulling the the tag ends the ones that are sticking out a little farther than the bulk and that way we just tapered this uh, this solar flare and I'll insert it into my dub loop and then I'll go ahead and space it out while I hold tension with my left hand I'm gonna use my right hand to space that out in the loop and so we want to make sure we work our way get it nice and even if you got a few clumps that's okay this is just going to be to add some flash and some underbody to this fly because it, it really helps with the sparkle effect and mimicking more of a lifelike minnow. Uh, if you ever looked at them, they really have some, some sparkle and translucency to them. And so what we'll do is we'll spin that up and then I'm going to brush it out a little bit just to get rid of those clumps, especially here on this rear section because uh, I want it to be a little bit thinner. And then I'll lay this bugger fiber just right over the top and then I'm going to take it out of uh, my tool here because I just hand twist this. Um, you don't want to twist it too many times because that stem of that uh, hackle fiber will break. And I've had that happen before. It's nothing if it does break, just keep tension on your, your dub loop. And then I'll brush those hackle fiber and that uh, solar flare together. And we have a killer, killer brush right here we just made that we're going to palmer with touching wraps, working our way all the way up to the, uh, the shank eye. Now you can see how those those bugger packs, uh, the bugger fibers are are sticking out just a little bit. They're sticking more horizontal, whereas the solar flare is kind of going every which direction, and that uh, is going to help create this uh, this profile so that when the marabou on the next section lays on top of this, it's not going to mat down and go completely flat. Um, the tail will go to a point, but um, the next section that we're going to tie in is going to kind of sit on top of this because that um, that structure that we just created and we'll just tie right up there to the the shank eye and we'll go ahead and tie it off this is a great technique that you can use and learn and practice uh, doing dub loops twisting it together with uh, with uh, natural feathers or I've also done where I've done two dub loops together and that seems to be a way to just make uh, a lot of materials a lot of uh, brushes on the fly yeah, that's a pun, but uh, basically making it on the fly. If you're going to be doing a lot of these, then of course you could create um, brushes on a dubbing brush table or in advance or purchase them from somebody that makes brushes in advance. That will speed up the process. But just do a single whip finish, um, three turn whip finish. Uh, we're going to throw some uh, UV resin on top of this to help uh, solidify this and make it kind of bulletproof. But since I'm using the Norvice bobbin, make sure you you cap it so you don't uh, lose all that tension otherwise it will just zip your thread right out and so that's a little practice just getting the the hang of doing and I'm just gonna apply it to each side here let it soak in I'm trying to avoid getting it into the the fibers uh, just keeping it primarily on the thread and then we'll go ahead and cure that for 10 to 15 seconds so this is the rear section I mean you could throw some eyes on this if it was a hook and fish it as is um, that's pretty much a maybe a glorified variation of a woolly bugger and we're just going to be doing that three times so um, brush it out uh, it should be pretty bulletproof we're using a really strong thread and um, uh, don't be afraid to brush it side to side front to back um, you want to get as many of those fibers out as possible especially on this rear section um, we don't want to create too much of a center core at this point but there we go that is the rear section and uh, we're going to grab a step up in a shank length we're going to go to a 25 millimeter now and I'll just go ahead and put that in while it's in the vise helps that's a little trick a little bit easier to do it while it's in the vise and then I'll go ahead and reposition this next shank into the vise and leaving that a little bit on top you can see by gripping the shank where I have it in the vise now that's perfect amount of wiggle room and so I can wrap my thread all the way almost back to my my jaws at this point and I know that the the, the rear section will still have plenty of ability to move and so we'll just close that shank again like we did before and then I'm going to put down a little bit of super glue like I said helps to close that gap with a little bit more thread and then we'll go ahead and wrap our way all the way back up um, to that um, almost to the jaws and then advance it just kind of getting some of that glue out of our way now we're going to be doing um, pretty much the same thing we did before but the importance is now we got to make sure we keep the white where the white is and the silver where the silver is so we match those up and uh, we're just going to be doing the same process of trimming out the tip and uh, laying it down and you can see I'm stacking it so that this section the tips are going to land almost 
almost in the bulk of, of my tail where the fibers kind of get a little bulkier. You don't want them to go too far into that tail, otherwise it will be a little bit too much profile here at the rear because this is you know, a minnow uh, baitfish pattern and you want to make sure it's a little bit skinnier at the tail than up on the main section where the hook will be. And so we'll go ahead and just trim out that marabou um, and notice how we're keeping it just right on top. If you can see a little bit of that, uh, that shank, that's perfectly okay. We might actually have a little hole right there, um, but once we get you know, finished with this section, you won't see that at all. And so now we'll do the same thing with the uh, iron dun color. And like I said, this is just a, uh, to mimic a minnow. A lot of the minnows I fish are on the, along with these color schemes that we're doing here. I'll measure it to match the top. But these, uh, these materials, this marabou, comes in a ton of different colors, uh, almost too many colors. And then oftentimes I'll use Sharpies to accent it, which makes even more colors. And so you can pretty much match anything you're trying to match. Now, um, this is a little key because as you're wrapping back, as you wrap over it, it's going to want to twist. So I'm pinching it with my left hand, keeping it so that we got top and bottom. And then all we're going to do is the same thing we did on the rear section, I'm going to create a uh, dubbing loop, tie in my bugger pack uh, fi uh, fiber, and uh, if you have some that are a little bit larger, we're going to you know, use a little bit step up on this one and then a little bit step up on the other one in fiber length. That way you know, we're increasing in that profile. I think I've said profile about 30 times already, and we're not going to stop. And then I'll go ahead and create that dubbing loop, uh, set it to the side, and then I'll tie in this, uh, this hackle fiber and we're going to uh, tie it in by the tip and if you get you know you can cut out your tip or you can just you know wrap it down and the key is here for this section we're going to tie in another marabou so you want to leave your dubbing loop to go about to there so you want to leave about an eye length of gap so that we don't have too much bulk now since we're doing the same exact thing I'm going to grab a little bit more solar flare do the same process we did before I'm going to zip through it speed it up so you don't have to watch it again but notice how I'm going to end with that uh, little gap right there. And the key is, when we're doing this now, we're going to lay this marabou just right here as we did before, match it up, and I'm just going to place it right on top. Now, if you see a little bit of the side, that white thread, that's okay because we're going to create a white head. So don't be concerned about you know the fish getting spooked because you got to remember we're tying another section in and that's going to flow back into this. And so we're just going to make sure that this marabou is secure. I'm not using, you know, I'm just using one fiber for each of these sections. Um, you'll have to judge whether you're using this uh, Fish Hunter Marabou or other brands of Marabou uh, if you need to add a second feather. Uh, the key to that is tie a bunch of them or a few of them, get it wet, see how it looks profile wise. Because you'll know right away if you added too much Marabou in one section because you'll have a little bit of a hump as it sits back um, versus not. And that's kind of a, a way that you can learn you know judge your feathers there's no real good way of doing it other than you know I could tell you when I pinch it it's roughly you know 323 millimeters of a half an inch but really it's just getting it wet or fishing it and seeing how it moves in the water you could put it in your tub and test it and then uh, just remember what it looked like or what the feather was when you tied and then you'll kind of over time just develop a an ability to sense hey this feather as a feel it it's going to be the perfect uh, bulk or I need to add a second one so we're going to trim that out we're going to close off this section we have finished it just to see how they sit on top and bottom we're not you know feathering around the whole thing and then we'll just go ahead and clean that up um, so we got a good junction point I'll do a three turn whip finish same process to throw a little bit of resin on and now we have a really cool streamer already but we're going to add another section so this thing's getting sexier and sexier by the minute. So we're using a, an A-Rex hook. This is a, a TP610 in a 2 watt, and I, I really like this hook. It's been really solid for me. I like the gap on it. And we're going to weight this, and we want it to write hook point down um, for this one. Um, sometimes when I, I do the double hook one, which it will be a different video, um, I like to have the hooks ride down versus um, trying to get a double hook to ride hook point up is a little bit more difficult. And so a little trick here for dumbbell eyes, we're going to have it right hook point down, so I'm going to attach them on the underside of the shank. I line that eye up and do three loose wraps, and then on the third wrap I kind of pull down and it will naturally seat it 
right there with a perfect gap distance. That's just a little trick I do so they're always the same. And then I'll do some figure eights and make sure that it is rock solid bulletproof with the, the wraps so that we uh, don't ever lose these eyes or they don't tilt to the side. However, with the weight on the bottom and the hook point, if they're a little off, I think you might be okay. But I want this to get down fairly quickly, so that's why we added the extra weight. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of super glue on there. Um, if you do enough thread wraps, especially with this wax thread, you don't really need to, but it's just, you know, I always do it, and I have confidence in putting a little super glue so that my eyes don't move. So for this, we're going to be using... Um, uh, you can use a lot of different materials. This is a spider wire. It's a braided line, uh, 14 pound, rated uh, I think 50 pounds or something. And I'm just going to cut off about a 10 inch piece. It's a little bit longer than you need, but this is how I do it. It's a little different. I'm going to fold it in half so that I know I've got enough. And then I'm going to tie in one strand kind of on my side of the top of the shank, not directly on the top. And then I'll tie in the opposing end on the other side of the top of the shank of the hook. So that these two... Uh, pieces are riding down the top of the shank touching. Now, you, do you need two pieces? No. And if I was attaching a rear hook, I would do this differently. I would fold them over, but I'm going to wrap it right there so it goes down the bend just a little bit. Throw some really tight wraps up and down this just to secure that to the hook shank. And now we're going to add a couple beads. And I like to add uh, these pink little plastic beads. There's nothing fancy about them. I think I got them in like a pretty big bulk pack. I can't remember where I got them. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use the point of this um, at the end where these two are connected on the loop. And I'm just going to shove it right through the bead, get the first bead on, and then I will attach a second bead. And uh, this is nothing new um, to uh, the streamer world, but uh, this is uh, just a little fun little way of uh, adding a little pink spot there and then I'll run it up through the hook shank making sure the gray is the iron done is up on top and then I'll run this back through the beads again um, go, and then we'll attach it back to the uh, the shank of the hook and be careful not to twist this the whole point of doing two of these is it creates the ability to limit twisting and it, it allows more side to side motion so you can see that those two fibers line up just with those other fibers on top and I'll, I'll go ahead and do four and then adjust the length so that I got a little bit of space and I just think it, it helps just a little bit to do two of these and if I was attaching a rear hook of course I would fold this back over and wrap it but since there's no need to you know add bulk with the, the, the spider wire I'm just going to tie it off and then wrap my way all the way back down and then here I'll close off this gap just a little bit and those beads look really nice right there. And I like them to sit a little bit lower um, so that uh, we got a little space so that bead just stays off the hook just a little bit. And we'll do, go ahead and just secure this because um, out of habit, I guess. Uh, but we, we, we want to make sure, of course, this stays in case a fish really chomps on the rear. I don't want him to take the, the tail out. And uh, here we're going to um, start with marabou on the rear to kind of cover up the beads and reduce the swing. And this is a uh, Kelly Gallup uh, trick here, I think, for his uh, uh, Barely Legal. I'm going to take two feathers that are about the same size. And instead of tying them on the bottom of the shank, I'm going to kind of tie it on the bottom side. And I'll measure to see that it kind of you know, goes into the bulk of that next section. And I'll uh, lay it here on the side, not on the bottom. And I'll go ahead and tie that in so that it starts to wrap down into the the bend of the hook. And you got that tag in that's just creating a lot of fun for you. But um, you can trim it out, or I'll just wrap it down. Like I said, I'm not afraid of adding a little extra weight on this, um, and uh, I'm not afraid to throw it when it gets a little heavy. Um, but uh, you know, if you like them lighter, you can trim it out. That will reduce the weight a little bit, maybe 34 grams. No, actually, that's a lot of weight. Never mind. I don't know how much. I've never weighed one um, wet versus one that's wet with it trimmed out. So we'll just measure and do the exact same to the other side. Um, that way that this marabou is uh, going off to the sides and not interfering with our hook point at all. And we'll just tie that back to the same point. And there we go. That is uh, the bottom section. And we'll do the same with the next, uh, with the iron done on top. Um, this is where you want to add a little bit more um, feather or marabou at this point. Um, so I may lay two pieces on top. I may get by with just one. Uh, it just depends on what your marabou looks like. But you definitely want a little bit more meat at this point 
um, so that uh, this is creating kind of a cone around that rear section with marabou which will give it a little bit of direction on how it's going to swim but um, I don't know this 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 streamer here it's it's combining a lot of different patterns you know like the the barely legal the uh, um, you know the methods by Clark of the complex twist I I, th I feel like it's got a little bit of game changer with you know the cones that they create with doing the game changer and so um, I really really like this uh, particular streamer and I love that it's connected with uh, with shanks and the spider wire and it just it has so much movement to it that uh, I've had a few friends fishing these and they just they love it and it crushes it and it lasts many many fish so another thing you could do if you want is super glue the underbodies on each of these sections but I don't do that um, just because I am using that wax thread and I haven't had any come apart yet and so we're going to create another marabou right there behind the eyes and then we're going to add some rubber legs this is kind of I guess uh, the flugen zombie uh, another pattern by Clark Pierce and I just fold them in half wrap it up and over and then I'll do a loose wrap and I don't have completely tight tension at this point but then I, I split the legs so I got three or four going down each side and I just since I did that loose wrap I'm able to pull it and position it so it kind of fans off to each side um, and then I never do tight wraps right here I'm just laying down um, some wraps at this point just to keep them in place they're not super super tight but then as I figure eight over those eyes those are a little bit tighter um, that way if something binds on this leg it's not going to have a tension point immediately right there on your thread to break and then I'll just pull these down measure it so it goes a little past the end of the hook and cut them so they're all the same length and this is a, a, a tab leg I think Snake River Fly sells these it's got some really cool little glitter to it you can't really see but uh, now we're here to the last step creating a head and this is uh, some spawn fly fish uh, dubbing. I think it's um, made by Arizona um, Dub. It's a semi seal, um, so it's not the mega semi seal, but it's just a semi seal in the regular length. And I'm going to see if we can make it work for this. So I'm just going to stack it by pulling out a clump, laying it on top of each other, and then um, what you want to do is get it so they're about aligned. And um, since I want it to be a little uh, a taper, I'm going to tie this section in here kind of a, a third going back and two thirds going forward and then I'll lay down a nice crank wrap and then I'm gonna speed through this um, because there's a lot of ways you can do these heads but the key is the finish a little trick here is when I do the underside if I really want those fibers to stay out of the hook point I lay a little bit of resin down on the tag end and then I just push it down into there and then cure it up and I'll also do that on the top section sometimes if the dubbing's not cooperating but then we'll go ahead and get to get a little bit more into this and we'll split those so that we got the gray on top and that pink on the bottom and uh, we don't want to you know try your best not to mix the fiber so some's going on top and then we'll build up a really good thread dam right here in front which will cause that uh, dubbing to go back and you can see there we go I got a little clump that's not cooperating with me on this particular one but um, we'll go ahead and pull those back and uh, make sure that we did a really good job on pushing those fibers back and then we'll do a three turn whip finish but I'll show you a little trick here that I use for most of mine because you could fish this just as is but uh, I'm going to do the whip finish and then I'm going to put a little bit of resin on this head just to give this more direction on how I want these fibers to lay I'm you you know making these fibers work on how I want them to work um, and sometimes you know some could argue that you don't want you want to make the fibers work the way they're supposed to work but to me I'm not afraid to uh, make them work the way I want them to work and give that nice head a nice little profile which will help it you know beginnings of the swimming and so we're going to separate those fibers now so I got all the pink on the bottom you know the best I can and then I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, thick uh, resin so it's flexible and I'm just going to coat this I'm gonna put a little bead all the way around this head and then we you know if you're afraid to get a little bit of uh, resin on your fingers you may or may not want to put on a glove but I'm just gonna lay down a bead right there around that thread maybe go a little bit up and uh, we got a lot of uh, dubbing on this and I'll come here on the underside as well and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my finger and avoid getting any of that resin in that eye and I'm just gonna brush it back 
while I'm still kind of holding those fibers in the place where I want them. And then as I brush those back, we'll, we'll pull it, trying not to get as much on my left hand, and then I'll go ahead and cure it. And you can see how that just holds it right where I want them to go. That way I know every time it gets wet, it's going to have a little bit more profile on the head because I resin them out. But um, like I said, this is an unnecessary step. And then since the, the thick is not a no tack, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, no tack resin to this so that, you know, it's going to just even be more bombshell. But there we go. That's the sexy Sven. Um, it's a single hook, tons of movement. Um, I'll probably maybe add a little swim test here in just a second so you can see how it moves. But uh, appreciate you guys watching. All these materials come in a ton of different colors. And so time up to match whatever you're fishing. And I hope that you have fun learning something from this because it's a super fun pattern to, to, to tie. It's a super fun pattern to fish. So um, check out this swim video and thanks for watching.